What's good guys? So one of the main advantages of using Flutterflow is the availability of widgets and the amount of things that you can do with them. So as an example, and so let's say I want like a YouTube widget, right? I just, I just search for YouTube. I just drag and drop it. And we have a YouTube widget that's, that already has a video loaded, right? So we can go in here, we can change the video URL, we can change kind of the width. We can say maybe a little bit smaller, maybe a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit more compact. We can do it maximum if you want. And that's kind of the nice things. Or if I want like a video, right? I can just search for a video player and I have a video with, you know, we have a sample video. We have um, all of these options that, that we can use, all of these interesting things. Now, if I want an audio, same thing. I have an audio player. I can just drag and drop it and we have an audio player, okay? There's the path to the audio file. Um, I have some settings that, you know, maybe I can configure. There's some settings here and there. But let's say I want something more custom. I want something more interesting. I want a, you know, a more uh, feature-filled audio player. I want, the, you know, I want it to look different. What are my options? Well, thankfully, with Flutterflow, there's a lot of things that you can do. So for instance, if you go to this website called pub.dev and you search for a bunch of packages and you search for a package that you want, you're going to find a lot of interesting widgets, a lots of interesting packages that you can use. So for instance, one of the packages that I found recently is called Just Audio. And this is a very, very popular package. It's a feature-rich audio player for Flutter, loop, clip, and concatenate any sound from any source in a variety of audio formats with gapless playback, okay? And so if you need more proof, just how popular it is, take a look at how many likes it has, pop points, and popularity, right? As compared to some of these other ones, right? Some of these other ones, you know, there's a video SDK, it has, you know, a lot less. So it's safe to say that this is actually a very, very cool plugin. So if you click on it, you can see how it looks, right? You can see it's so customizable. It has a lot of features, a lot of functionality, uh, URLs, assets, files, byte streams, volume. So I remember when I looked at it, I was like, I want to, you know, I want to have a, a, an audio player that looks like that. I don't want like a stock audio player, meaning like the one that came with Flutterflow. I want something unique. I want, you know, I want my app to be different, right? Don't we all? And so this package, you can easily import into your Flutterflow app by following the steps like I'm about to explain to you right now. And so let's say you want to use that specific uh, audio player, okay? Just as an example, for the sake of this tutorial, you want to use that audio player. Well, I'm going to show you right now exactly what you need to do to make it work and to make your app look a lot nicer, a lot more original, a lot more interesting, all right? So once you're back inside your app, what you guys want to do is you want to go to this tab right here, this option right here called custom code, okay? You want to go on the second tab called custom widgets. And we're going to hit create. And here's where we got to call the widget a name. So we're going to call it audio player widget. Uh, here we have a bunch of other options. These are required within Hyatt, so we can add more parameters, and I'm going to show you how to do that as well. But right now what you guys want to do is you want to click this button called View Boilerplate Code. And essentially it generates for you kind of the starting point for the code that we're going to kind of mess around with. And it's going to be very, very straightforward. So the next thing you guys want to do is copy to editor, and now we have this code, okay? But this is just a blank widget. It's going to compile... But it's not going to do anything because it's just going to be returning a container, right? It's just going to be returning a container that's supposed to be the base for other things. Now, you guys got to pay attention to some of the following steps because this is very, very important. So how do we get started? Well, the first thing that you guys want to do is you want to go into the example tab. This is where we always begin because typically for a lot of these uh, widgets, plugins, whatever you want to call them, they have typically comprehensive examples. So they go out of their way to show you like the full functionality of these widgets. And this is a great starting point, okay? So this is kind of the example here. And what you guys wanna do is the first thing that you guys wanna do, and this is gonna be the same thing 
with all of these widgets, with all of these plugins is you want to scroll down and you want to go to the second class. So it says here, my app, and then we have my app state. This thing manages everything that happens to the widget, okay? We do not want to copy this, but we want to copy the line after. So we're going to copy starting from final. We're going to drag it down. We're going to copy. And then we're going to go back to our code and we're going to come in here where it says state. And we're going to go to the second line and we're going to delete everything, everything under it. And we're going to paste, okay? So now we paste it. Now, once you've pasted, you're going to see a bunch of errors here telling you that something is not right, telling you some issues. Do not worry about that yet. Let's go back to this thing. Next, you're going to go to the top of this and you're going to copy and paste everything that's at the top. Okay, we're going to copy this and we're going to paste it all the way at the top. Now, there are a couple of things you still need to do where it says package flutter. You want to delete that because that's automatically included. So as you can see, it even is telling you that. Duplicate import. You can delete this and this, both of these. So we're going to delete this, okay? Now, the next thing you guys want to pay attention to is that it has these packages here, audio session, audio session, has just audio, just audio, which is kind of what we're using, but it also has not even a package, but kind of like a file. It's a just audio example common Dart, and then it has another package, okay? So the next thing that we need to do is we need to find this file and we need to include it as well. This is very, very easy. And this is, and you can tell this is the file we wanna include because it's not the same name. So you see it says just audio session, audio session, just audio, just audio, RX Dart, RX Dart, but then here, it's just audio example common Dart. And that's very, very easy to do. You guys want to click on this link. You guys want to do that. Then you want to go up one directory and you're going to find this common Dart. We're going to click on common Dart and we're going to copy it. We're going to copy it. We're going to go back to our app. We're going to scroll all the way down and we're going to paste it. Now, when we paste it, we are we also pasting a, a couple of things that we don't really need. So if we scroll up, we're pasting this import. We don't need these imports. We can delete them, okay? Because anything that you paste below it, it's, it doesn't need any other imports. All the imports are going to be up, up on top. Now that we pasted this file, we can delete it. And, and we are left with three packages, three imports. The next thing that we need to do is we need to add dependencies for these three packages, okay? And let me show you how to do that. So let's do just audio because we have it open here. So we have just audio. If you click on this link, you can copy it and that's gonna copy the dependency. You're gonna say add dependency, you're gonna paste. Next, you're gonna find audio session. Come in here, audio session. You're gonna open, click on the package. You're gonna do the same thing, copy, add dependency. And last but not least, we have RX Dart. We're gonna search for RX Dart. We have it here. You can just copy that and paste it here, okay? Now at this point, we have the packages here and we have the dependencies, okay? You need both, okay? You need both. And you can kind of ignore all of this stuff until you try to compile, okay? So let's save it and let's try if it's gonna compile. We're gonna say compile code and let's see what kind of errors we get, if any. All right, so we tried compiling and it says has errors. Next thing you wanna do, edit widget, and you wanna click on this thing here, this bug icon. And it's telling us a couple of errors that we have. System Chrome, this is line 26, and then another error 321. So that's very, very easy, okay? So in many cases, this is just setting status bar color black. We can just remove that, it's not important. So I'm gonna remove that and that problem is fixed. Now we have line 321. So we're gonna go back to line 321. We're gonna go down to line 321. This is line 321. And it's giving us an error. And the reason it's giving us an error is that we have this hidden thumb component shape. And if we go up, we're trying to use it here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna delete this, this class here. From here to here, we're simply gonna delete it because all this class is doing it is setting its size to zero. That's all it's doing. So we can delete it. And because it's setting it to zero, we can simply replace where it's being used, this thing right here, 
we can simply replace it with something like this. We can just say enable thumb radio zero zero. It's the same thing. And now we don't really need to worry about it. All right, so now we fix the box. So now we can save it, click it again, try compiling again, and hopefully it's gonna be fine this time. Let's see. All right, and there we have it, no error. So that means this thing has compiled perfectly and we can actually use it. So let's open that up again and I'm gonna show you something. So in the beginning, you see it sets this URL here. This is the MP3 that's gonna be playing. So let's see if it works. Let's go back to our app. Let's uh, try adding it. So here's the custom code widgets. We're gonna drag it here. We're gonna maximize the width and we're gonna make the height maybe 200. And here's the widget, okay, here's the widget. And so if we run the app now, we should be able to play uh, the audio widget. And here's our app with our custom widget. So we can actually play it, and you may not be able to hear it, but it's actually playing the audio. The other thing that we can do is we can drag it, we can seek it to the right direction, and look at that, all of this automatically. We can also increase the speed and that works perfectly. All of that is part of this widget and it's all customizable. So there's many things that you can customize. You can customize the color of this. You can customize this handle here, this circle. You can customize what happens when you click on it, how it adjusts the volume, this uh, slider that pops up. You can customize, you can include an image here that shows maybe if something is playing or not. So let me show you how that's done. So we can go back to our custom widgets, we can click on this, we can click on edit, and we can scroll down and we can see that for instance, here's the active track color, it's blue right now, we can make it red. For instance, we can change that to red, we can save, we can compile it, we see that there are no errors there, we can go back to our app and we can run the app. So now that you can see this color is no longer blue, it is light red now. The next thing you may want to customize is the ability to enter the URL of the audio file that you want to play. That's actually also easy to do, okay? So you're going to go back to code, you're going to come in here, and you're going to add a parameter, okay? This parameter name is going to be audio URL. This is going to be a audio path, okay? You're gonna do that. Once you have it here, you wanna add it here as well. You're just gonna say this audio URL, and here you're gonna add it here, and then you're gonna come in here, and when you find this uh, hard-coded URL, you're gonna put in the URL that you have here. So you're gonna do something like this, and now it's gonna use this URL that we specify from the app itself. So if we save this here, and we compile it again to make sure it works. As you can see, here's our new parameter here, audio URL, and it says here, no errors. And that means we can go back here, and as you can see, this widget is still here, but we have a new audio URL, audio path, and we can set it from a variable, or we can actually put in our own path. So I found this random site that has a bunch of random MP3 files. We can just copy the path, copy the link address, go back to our app and put it in here, okay? And now if you run the app, it's gonna load it here and we'll be able to play it. So let's run the app. And if we play it, you may not be able to hear it, but I do, and this is a new file. As you can see, it's only six seconds, which is what I found here. This is a six second synth melody, okay? If we, let's say, use a 19 second, we can just copy link address, go back to the app, paste it here, and once it loads, you should see this is 19 seconds and this is our buffer is loading and there it is, it buffered everything. If we view the app now, preview the app, we can see that it's playing perfectly. We can control the volume, we can control the speed, we can change all of that and all of that is absolutely customizable. Okay, remember, we can do a lot of things. So for instance, we can go back here we have a column, we wanna add maybe an image on top, we can do that by just simply creating an image and we can change that image to something else. So here's an image that I found that I thought would be a good fit. This is some kind of an album image. I just put it in here and then we have our controls at the bottom. And like I said, everything is completely customizable. We can uh, put the time remaining in the middle. We can add more controls here that for instance, 
uh, does back or we can play the next track. Lots and lots of things that you can do. And just to get your appetite wet, check out this plugin, right? I found this plugin called Just Waveform created by the same person as the other plugin. And this is a plugin that allows you to create a visualization, okay? So you can integrate this plugin back with the other plugin and you will have your basic controls like this, but you will also have your visualization. And so that is something I may cover in some of the future videos if you guys are interested in that. So if this is something of interest to you, let me know in the comments below and definitely like this video and subscribe to the channel. But that is not all. There are tons and tons of plugins. You can simply head to Pop Dev, and you can follow the exact same steps that I use in order to incorporate that plugin uh, to, for pretty much any other plugins. It works the exact same way. And actually, the code that I have here, I will have it on my brand new Patreon page that you're going to see in the description below. On the new Patreon page that I set up, there's going to be lots of different uh, code snippets, things that I use on this channel. Plus, we're going to have live streams. I'm going to be answering your questions. So definitely check out that page and become a supporter. So that is all that I wanted to show you guys in today's video. If this is a topic that interests you, you want to see more of this kind of content, more of these uh, using these uh, special widgets, incorporating all of these widgets, customizing them, making them, you know, interesting, making them unique, customizable. Let me know in the comments below, like this video, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Also, make sure to check out my Patreon page. You're going to find a ton, a ton of content as time goes on. I'm going to be sharing with you some interesting ideas, some interesting thoughts on that page as well. So that is all that I wanted to talk to you guys about today. I really hope you've gotten value here. Thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you in a future video.